And so, and we've seen it a lot of times that the way the Lord, the way the Lord operates is when you, is when you make the decision to obey him is when you experience is when he pours out the power to obey him. So a lot of times we're waiting, we're waiting for the power and we're waiting for the inspiration. We're waiting for the motivation We're you know, we're waiting to feel motivated or inspired to obey God. But the thing is that the, the, the motivation and the inspiration is going to come from the Holy Spirit when you make a decision in your heart. And then when you make that decision, then the power is going to come, not the other way around. Right. And so a lot of times when we do experience the power of God, the presence of God without obeying him, it's because he's trying to provoke us to obey him. It's because he's 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 provoking us to come to that place of, of, of repentance, of crying out to him, of of depending on him. Right. So um, and, and I want to start where we left off because I didn't I didn't really get to emphasize that the way I wanted to. So I'm going to start at Second Peter. And this is where, where I left off. Second Peter. Uh, chapter three, and I'm gonna start at verse three. Knowing, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts, and saying, "Where is the promise of his coming?" For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. So he's saying right here, the word of God is saying, there's going to be people that say, didn't he say he's going to come? Didn't Jesus say he's going to come? But years keep coming, years keep coming, years keep passing and passing, and he hasn't come yet. So there's going to be scoffers saying that, right? And then, and then for, for this, they, they willfully forget that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water by which the world that, that then existed perished being flooded with water um so god is even saying like even what you see with your eyes this is so crazy he's even saying even what you see with your naked natural eyes should be an indication that i'm real and that i and that i do what i say because i created the heavens and the sea and and all those things right and also that he brought judgment with the great flood right so which even scientists now say is proven that a lot of scientists agree that there was there was a great flood on the earth at, at one point Right by the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same word, are reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, do not forget this one thing: that with the Lord one day is is as a thousand years, and as a thousand years one day. I mean, that's what that's fascinating. One of the things that's fascinating about that is that this is right Second Peter written about two thousand years ago, right? Uh, uh, maybe a little less, and and it's crazy. A lot of them were expecting that they were going to see Christ return in their lifetime, right? As a lot of men, of men and women of God have thought before. And then he's actually saying, don't you remember that a thousand years is a day to the Lord and a day, a thousand years. It's the Lord in his brilliance is kind of letting them know, like, th this is going to be thousands of years from now, but it's still going to happen, right? It's going to be thousands of years. And that literally was 2000 years ago. So to the Lord, that was two days ago, right? And, right? and then the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. So this is the fascinating thing. He's using that example to say, listen, even though a thousand years is as a day, I am going to return like I said I am. And, and, I, and he's using this as an example, like saying to say, but I'm not slack concerning my promises. In other words, this is what's fascinating. God's promises are a guarantee. And this is something that, that um, again, like for those that were here last week, this is a little bit of a recap. This is something that, that uh, the flesh nature of man, of, of, of mankind, our flesh nature, right? Uh, 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 often when we're not in the spirit forgets and becomes passive, right? And, and, and just falls asleep spiritually and just assumes that, that, you know, what God promised is not going to happen or the things that God said in his word. Yeah, maybe it's going to happen a long time from now. And one of the things that burns inside of us when we're on fire is the understanding and the faith that God manifests whenever he wants to and is and is able to manifest immediately in the moment and is able to manifest however he wants. So when you're on fire, you, you just you're carrying that reality that God is going to manifest right now, that God can manifest um, any which way, but when when you become when you lose fire, you start to think that his promise maybe it's going to happen, maybe it's not going to happen. And God is reminding us in His Word right here, and what I and what I quoted, He's reminding us: listen, listen, it is a guarantee 
live, live like it's a guarantee. And when you live like it's a guarantee, what ends up having ha happening in your life is you become spiritually provocative. You become a, 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 a one that provokes man these manifestations with your faith, right? Because because when you live like 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 these things are a guarantee, the word of God is a guarantee. What happens is you're going to act on that, and when you act on that, you put yourself in the position to experience God moving supernaturally. But but when you when you start to believe, when you start to become passive and you start to get discouraged and you start to let fear get the best of you or discouragement get the best of you or or even even more how you feel. The enemy is an expert at, at using how you feel. You don't feel energy, you don't feel encouraged, you don't feel uh supported, you don't feel um, you know, and the enemy is an expert at at, at manipulating those things and manipulating how you feel because when you just move by commitment and faith, you make heaven manifest, right? You make heaven manifest and, and, and you're not gonna become subject to how you feel. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So the, the immature, the spiritually immature Christian, and again, this is a continuation of last week, the spiritually immature Christian is able to be manipulated by circumstances, right? And, and, and also the spiritually immature Christian um, has circumstantial faith. Sometimes they believe, sometimes they don't believe. And this is what happened to uh, the, the disciples when they were in the boat, right? The, the, the storm shook them. It, they, they, were, they were subject to the circumstance. And so something I heard um, Apostle Mario say a week ago is that when Jesus was going to be, uh, when the angels came and took him out of the jail, he was actually um, sleeping between two guards and he was bound and shackled and he was asleep because he had already learned the lesson. He already had learned his lesson when he was in the boat with Jesus. He already learned how to sleep in the middle of a storm. He learned how to sleep in the middle of a trial and just trust the Lord. And because of that, the angel came in, put him in a trance and took him out of the, of the jail supernaturally, right? Because he knew how to just uh, uh, be at peace and not and not even concern himself with the way things look in the natural but when we're spiritually immature we get caught up in those things and and what happens is also when we're spiritually immature we we a lot of times we could fall into um thinking something is not the truth just because it offends us or just because um you know just because it affects our emotions or it makes us feel bad uh it makes us feel badly about ourselves or it makes us feel bad in our emotions we think that it's a, it's a lack of love and, and we got to be careful with that because that's what the people that are going to call what is evil good and what is good evil fall into. You know, when, 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 when they feel like if it makes them feel bad about themselves, if it makes them feel badly, then it's evil because it doesn't make them feel good. But the truth is not subject to the way, the way it makes you feel. In fact, we're supposed to bow down to the truth. The truth is not supposed to bow down to us. And so what happens is when we walk in emotions, we subtly start wanting the truth to adjust to the way we feel instead of adjusting the way we feel to the truth. And when you're willing and able to adjust the way you feel to the truth is when you're going to be uh, an instrument of power. When you adjust the way you feel to the truth, hello, is when this is why the Bible says rebuke a wise man and he'll love you because you just gave him an opportunity for greater character. You just gave him a, an opportunity for greater, for greater conviction, for greater revelation. You just gave him, but rebuke a fool and he will hate you. You know, like why? Because because he thinks he or she thinks that if it makes them feel bad, then it isn't the truth because we don't understand God's lordship. And so part of maturity is not just accepting the lamb of Jesus, but it's also accepting the lion of Jesus. It's, it's not just accepting his mercy. It's also accepting his lordship. Right. Because because um, spiritual maturity is part of it is understanding that, yes, faith is going to cause us to access God's love for us. But holiness is loving God back. So faith is going to faith access God it accesses God's love for you. But holiness is how you love God back. And so if we're just if we just want to talk about how much God loves us and we're not willing to love God back, then what happens is we can fall into having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. I don't know if you guys are hearing what I'm saying, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, because what is the power thereof? The power thereof is to become like Jesus. Yeah, you got saved, but you got saved for what? To become like Jesus. Because Jesus needs more of himself on the earth. So a lot of times we want to, you know, it's, it's about the way we feel. So when we're spiritually immature, it's about how we feel. It's, it, it's about, you know, I didn't feel the presence of God. I didn't see this. That's why David knew how to make God show up. Because you know, you know how you could live a lifestyle? One of the keys to, 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 to living a lifestyle 
uh, of, of, of encountering God, one of the keys is not needing to feel him, but needing to worship him and needing to honor him and needing to obey him. If you need to obey him and you need to worship him, but you're not going into his presence just to feel him, you're going to end up feeling him. <laughs> yeah, you're not hearing what I'm saying. I don't know if you hear what I'm saying. Because see, if, if you go into his presence needing to feel him, then what happens is the enemy knows these things and the enemy knows, I just got to get them in an argument. I just got to get them in an argument. I just got to get them offended. I just got to get them, I got to get them, I just got to arrange for them to be betrayed. I just got to get them to, to fall in, in, in this little sin because when they fall in this sin, they're, 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 they're not going to have the same ability to, to deal with offense and then I can manipulate their emotions. Remember, you've heard me say this, the goal of the devil to get you to sin is not just sin. Right, the goal of the devil is to delete faith in you. Is to delete revelation in you. Is 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 to remove persistence in you. Is to remove a steadfast spirit in you. Are you guys hearing what I'm saying? That's the goal. Because because as long as even if you fall, but you make God show up, then you're gonna have victory. So even if you fall, but you know how to make God show up, and how do you make God show up? Well, this is spiritual maturity. Spiritual maturity is I'm gonna seek God whether I feel Him or I don't. Spiritual maturity acts, acts on faith and commitment, right? What he did yesterday is enough for me to worship him today. So even if I don't feel him Monday and I don't feel him Tuesday and I don't feel him Wednesday, I'm not, that doesn't mean that Thursday, I'm not going to seek him. Friday, I'm not going to seek him. Saturday, I'm not going to seek him. Sunday, I'll go to church, but I'm not going to seek him because you know what? Every time I seek him, I don't feel him. You think the enemy is, doesn't know that? You think the enemy is not going to use that against you? And that's, that's, that's what spiritual immaturity is when we're subject to the circumstances, right? But what happens is when you're spiritually immature, I mean, I'm sorry, when you're spiritually mature, when you make a decision to, to, to crucify what your emotions don't want you to crucify, when you make a decision to die to what your emotions don't want you to die to, then what happens is you end up, you end up going from glory to glory. You know what I mean? You, that's how you go to another glory. When you're willing to let go of the things that your human emotions don't want you to let go of, right? And so, the, and, and I understand that only the Holy Spirit can lead you to your to to take joy in your own death. <laughs> the only the Holy Spirit, only the Holy Spirit can lead you to take joy in your own death to self, and and and, and that's led by conviction and vision. But what happens is we have to. We are the ones that have to maintain that, right? And so I'm gonna I'm gonna read I'm gonna read to you from, from Jude. You guys can go with me to Jude. All right, I'm gonna read Jude. It's only one chapter. Okay, I'm gonna read Jude chapter 20 and 21. But you beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith. Who? Building yourselves up. Build yourselves up. It doesn't say, and you beloved, wait upon the Lord for him to build you. It doesn't say that. It says, but you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God. Whoa, 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 whoa. which is what? Keep yourselves in the love of God. <sighs> Bems is fighting words. See, that is the, that is the difference be between someone that will be tossed to and fro by the wind that is the difference between someone that, that the enemy can, 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 uh, can be effective with. That is the difference between someone that the enemy can be effective with to someone that the enemy will lose influence over. That is the difference between someone that, 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 that is tossed back and forth from someone that makes the winds shift. Because when, when, when yeah, yeah, this is why Jesus had the ability to speak to the wind and make it leave, right? Because he had authority over that because he wasn't subject to those things. So what happens is that's, that's going to be the difference. The difference between being, being tossed to and fro back and forth, you know, by this betrayal and that betrayal and, and by these people accepting you and those people accepting you and, and by these positive words and these, and these, and these negative words. And, ca and can we be honest, people of God, can we be honest these are the things that we hide the most from each other. These are the things we hide the most from each other. Just how affected we are by praises, we hide that from each other. How affected we are by, by, by um, rejection, we hide that from each other. 
we know that in the, in the church, it's a no-no. It's a no-no. So we become actors. And you know, because when, when you go to someone's instru- uh, uh, social media and every other picture is a picture of them themselves preaching, there's an issue with wanting applause. There's an issue with wanting applause. And I'm not saying you can't have one or two. I mean, definitely, if you're talking about evangelizing in the street, that's different. A life of sacrifice is not as, you know, as, as, as easily confused. But a lot of times, those are things we hide from each other. How much the rejection hurt, how much the abandonment hurt, how much we love the praise, how much we love the promotion. A lot of times, those are things that we hide from each other because what it means that secretly we are not spiritually mature, which means we're not able to really face our vulnerability. We're not able to face what is really happening in us. So the, so the, so the, the fullness of God's heart can't be expressed through our lives. So a lot of times, there's a lot of people that are used with power, but don't express the love of the Father because, because they're afraid of being vulnerable. And, they, and there isn't a real spiritual maturity. They can preach about spiritual maturity, but their lives don't preach about spiritual maturity. There isn't a real spiritual maturity because, because it, it, there, there, isn't, there isn't a real surrender in private where we're able to be vulnerable. This is why sheep were always, um, um, even before Jesus, and we know that the Jews used to sacrifice sheep representing Jesus and that the, the coming of Jesus. We know that. But why a sheep? Why was it a sheep that was sacrificed? And we know sometimes they sacrifice bulls, but, but, but why a sheep? What was, why would they, why would they uh, uh, atone for the sins with a sheep? Well, a sheep is innocent. A sheep is innocent. A sheep is, it can't defend itself. It's, uh, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's vulnerable. It's innocent. It's vulnerable. You know, so then God is showing us, right, through the sacrifice that sin is killing what is innocent. Sin is killing what is vulnerable. Sin is killing what can't defend itself, right? But also, the Bible says that Jesus let himself be led like a lamb to the slaughter. And he didn't resist. He didn't resist. He let himself be led like a lamb to the slaughter, meaning he was able to be vulnerable. He knew how to be vulnerable. And so when you're able to be vulnerable in private with God, when you're not afraid, see, this is the thing. A lot of us want to be lions in private and we want to act like we're lions in private and we're lions in public and we're just there roaring on top of a mountain all the time. You know, when you're, when you're able to be vulnerable in private, then God is able to take that vulnerability and, 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 give, and fill it with his strength. And then we're able to truly love people because you can't love people when you're constantly guarding yourself. You can't love people the way that you're supposed to when you're constantly guarding yourself. And so, and, 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 and also you're able to tell people the truth, even if they misunderstand you, even if they get offended with you, even if they say that you're bad because you care more about their future than your popularity. You care more about your future than your popularity. And these are, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to continue after this, but I just want to, I just want to make sure this is expressed. These are the things that have held back the love and the power of, of God in the American church. What are the things? Us, us our egos, our spiritual, our spiritual immaturity, us not wanting to, 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 lay, to lay down, to truly live a life of sacrifice and, and lay down our need for fame and our need for acknowledgement and our need for these things. And so because we don't really lay these things down, we can't really love people the way that we're supposed to. And it's hindering God from moving the way he wants to. Right, because in because we preach about spiritual maturity, but in reality, a lot of leaders, even high-ranking leaders, are spiritually immature. Because because you know, because when you don't pick up their call, they treat you differently. You know, because when you don't do what they say, they don't want you around anymore. And and that means that they're hurt, and that's okay because you're human. But what's not okay is. The, we're all human here, and, and, and the only Lord is Jesus Christ. So when someone leads someone else, it has to be because they're more dead to themselves than me. It has to be that they have less need because they're getting more of their needs fulfilled in private by the Holy Spirit. So they have less need for honor. They have less need for acknowledgement. They have less need for praise. They have less need that everyone speaks well of them. They have less need of those things because they know how to lay themselves down then that is a true leader because they're more dead to themselves than others, right? So I'm, I'm moving on, guys. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your, in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keeping yourselves in the love of God. 
It is your responsibility to keep yourself in the love of God. You have to fight. It's your responsibility. It's saying it here, keeping yourself. Oh, no, man, I was on fire. But then I started hanging out with these people. And, you know, they drink once in a while. And, you know, you could drink a little bit. And so, yeah, you know, I would drink a little bit. And then I don't know. And then no, 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 no. The Bible says the righteous man chooses his friends wisely. The Bible says bad company corrupts good habits. The word of God says if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. One of the most gruesome things you could possibly think of. It's saying no matter what it is, if it's keeping you from me, understand that I am life. I am not a life. I am not a option. I am life. You have to keep yourself in the love of God. And this is why when he comes to judge the church, he says, this I have against you. How could God have it against you if it isn't your responsibility? How could he say this I have against you, that you have, you have, you have lost your first love? How could he have that against us if it's not our responsibility? Maybe it's like, but God, but, but I haven't felt your presence in a long time. But that's your responsibility. And how is it my responsibility? Well, look at, look at Mary. Huh? Mary solved the problem the disciples didn't, couldn't figure out. Whew. Mary solved the problem the disciples could not figure out. He said, when I came in, you didn't even give me a kiss. And she has not stopped worshiping me. In other words, she was so desperate for, 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 for God, she didn't even care about her reputation. The problem is... The other disciples had too much of their egos, too much of their egos were still involved. And you've heard me say this, hunger for, for God comes when you're willing to empty yourself of something else that is giving you self-esteem. If something else is giving you self-esteem that is not God, you're not going to be hungry for God in that area. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. And I understand that there is a rad radical aspect to this. And I understand that maybe not everyone listening uh, can, can digest the radical aspect of this. I understand that. But understand that you're going to need love. You're going to need love. I'm going to need love. And there's only one love that remains. There's only one love that's going to satisfy you and fulfill you. You know what's crazy? Last night, um, maybe I'll put it up on my Instagram. I was watching um, I was watching this thing from Isaiah Saldivar. Many of you guys have seen his videos, awesome videos. And he put up um, something about Cardi B and how Cardi B, um, you know, Cardi B was saying like, um, she straight up said, she just straight up said it like um, that the spirit that, you know, she was like, um, my, my music activates demons. She said it, right? You guys can look this up. She was like, my music activates demons and I don't want to do it anymore. I just want to be a mother. And, and she's like, and, and she's going to come back. And she was like, and she's going to come back. And it's like, what is, what is, she, what is she? She goes, I don't want to be that Cardi B anymore. I just want to be a mother and she's going to come back. Like talking about a spirit. And I'm like, yo, this is so crazy. This is so crazy, bro, that she has money and fame and, and that which everyone in the flesh wants, which at this point, forgive me, guys, if, it's, if this sounds heavy, at this point, it's even like half the church, the American church. She has money and fame and what everybody wants, even in the church. And she literally wants what people have in the church. I was like, this is crazy. Like, she really wants Christ, only Christ could break the pact with that demon. Only Jesus, by the grace of God, may somebody filled with the Holy Spirit uh, speak to her and pray for her and, and, and get her radically saved to repent and receive Jesus and be filled with the Holy Ghost. May somebody in the name of Jesus, and I'll be praying that for her. May God have mercy on her. It's so crazy that it's so crazy that she wants what we have and we want what she has. Stop lying. Stop lying. Bro, half the church, they act, they, they, they're, they're there, you know, with a pious face, but they better see their face on a flyer. They better see their name. They, they, they want to be the next person there in the send on, the, on a flyer. You know what I mean? And there's, there's fruit that speaks about, you could tell by fruit, there's fruit. And it's crazy how half the church wants what Cardi B has, and Cardi B just wants what we have access to. And meanwhile, Jesus is like, hello, I'm here waiting I'm waiting. And he's saying, keep yourselves in my love. If you haven't been in my presence, listen, church is powerful, but you need to be able to have church in private with me. If you're not able to access my presence, then, then start. The Bible says we enter his gates through praise and thanksgiving. He gave us his Holy Spirit. He gave us fasting. He gave us prayer. We even have worship music at our disposal. He gave us all these things. And some of us are still not in his presence. 
Hello. He gave us worship music. Right. The Bible says in the book in, in the New Testament, sing songs and spiritual songs over each other. Well, at this point in 2000, you know, whatever we have it, we have the music recorded, the psalms singing over each other. We have it recorded. We can put it on whenever we want. We have worship music. We have the Bible. We have prayer. We have fasting. And yet and yet we have complaints. This is spiritual immaturity. Spiritual immaturity is not being willing to take responsibility. But God is not asking you to do the impossible. God is asking you to do what is possible so that you can watch him through you. God wants you to watch him through you. And when you watch him through you, you're going to be like, how did this happen? You're going to be like, remember, remember when you were on fire and some of you are still there. You know, don't get me wrong. You know, you, but you know, some of you know, and you're like, man, how did God do this? I remember, man, there's times I've evangelized, and then I started remembering scripture that I never sat down to remember. And people were looking at me like I was like a concordance. And I was like, how the heck did I remember that? There's, there's, and, and, and how did this happen? Because the Holy Spirit is like, it's called, I put my Holy Spirit in you, step out of the way. The Holy Spirit is like, step out of the way. The Holy Spirit is like, step off. You know, <laughs> step up, but then also step off. And let me just do, you know, and, and, and then we just watch him. And in our weakness, his strength is perfected. And God is saying, I want to do the impossible in your life again. But you're counting the, the you're, you're, I, I want to do, I want to make the impossible possible in your life again. But the thing is that you're counting impossibility too much. Like David, like when David wanted to count how many soldiers he had so that he could trust his numbers to protect, to protect Israel. And God is like, stop looking at, at, your, at how much you owe. Trust me. Stop looking at how much you're going to need. Trust me. Stop. Stop considering. <laughs> listen, listen. So don't worry about those that misunderstand you. Those that that they want to insist. They want to accuse you. Listen. Some people will not bow down to, to the truth because they're so hurt inside. They prefer their own truth, and they don't want to repent of their own truth because because if they do, they have to fa face their hurt. And they have forgotten how beautiful it feels to face your hurt in the fire and the love of God. There are few beautiful feelings in this existence that compare to the beautiful feeling of what it, what it, what it feels like to, to, to face your hurt and to face in the, in the love of God where God deals with you and, 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 and loves you and, and, and pours himself out on you in a way that no human being and no circumstance ever can. And this is, and it's so crazy how Cardi B wants this and we want what she has. And listen, stop lying because a lot of us do. Why? Because we still don't know God like we should. If we knew God like we should, he said, if, if, if you love the world or anything in the world, the love of the father is not in you. In other words, if you're still desiring something of the world, it's because you're not being satisfied by my love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, if you love the world or anything in the world, the love of the father is not in you. In other words, in other words, how could you be burning with the love of the father? How could you be getting satisfied with the love of the father? How are you experiencing the love of the father, but you're still desiring the things of the world? Because the love of the father comes with not only love that, that is inexpensive, explicable but it comes with knowledge it comes with understanding it comes with it comes with power there's nothing like it how could you be experiencing the very reason the very reason how could you be coming face to face with the reason that you're alive the reason why you suffered what you did the reason why you're breathing air the reason you have a purpose the reason you're relevant the reason that heaven and hell are fighting over you every day listen you're so valuable heaven and hell are fighting over you every day listen and then you're having an encounter and experience with the reason that you're alive and the reason you exist how are you experiencing that but you still want to want to jam out to that drake you still want to jam out to that cardi b you still want to how you still want to you know jam out to that trevor scott how is it how is that possible stop lying the bible says do not boast and lie against the truth in other words in other words if you insist that this is okay with god then you're painting a wrong truth to people and you're becoming like a Pharisee because Jesus told the Pharisees, you hindered them when they were entering the kingdom and you yourself do not enter. In other words, they were about to go into the kingdom and you stopped them because you gave them a doctrine. You gave them a false doctrine that justified their flesh. And who doesn't want their flesh justified? 
Have you ever started a fast? It's happened to me. You start a fast and someone like comes out with some food and then they start explaining to you why it's okay to just eat a little bit of those tender morsels. Has that ever happened to you? That you start a fast and they break out with like the hot dogs with the relish and with, and you're like, you're like, yo, you know? And then they're like, oh, it's okay, man. God, you know what I mean? Like you could just jump right back on the fast. And then you start thinking like, yeah, it is okay. I can just jump right back. I'll be right back, Lord. You know what I mean? Like, you know, they start, you know, they break out that pizza and you're like, oh Lord, bless it, Lord. <laughs> you know, you, you know, and, and, and has that ever happened? It's just me. It's just happened to me. I don't know. Right. And you're like, man, but then, but then, but then there's the conviction. I'm going to be satisfied with food for a short moment, but that's not going to be what really satisfies me. I mean, there's times that my wife didn't know I was fasting because I don't always tell her. It's not because I'm being spiritual. It's because she works, she has her office and I'm doing something else. So I don't always tell her sometimes I'm fasting. And then like sometimes, you know, she'll, she'll, you know, offer food and she doesn't know. Right. And so it's not like it's her fault. You know, she doesn't know, but you know, there's, there, there's times and there's times that I told her, I'm like, look, mama, I want the food, but I want, I want something from this. I want God more. And there's something I want from God that's more important than that. You know? So um, there's, there's decisions we have to make. And so right here, the word of God is commanding us. It says, it says, right. It says, keep yourself in the love of God. Right. And it says, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life and on some have compassion, making a distinction. Listen, he's saying it's your responsibility to go after me, to find me, to do war. And, it, and it's crazy when you when you do that, the reward, the rewards for seeking God. Listen, the greatest miracle after salvation itself is private holiness. The greatest miracle after salvation is holiness in private. That's the greatest miracle, the greatest miracle. And maturity is understanding that without holiness, we're not loving God back. But a lot of us, especially in the American church now, we just want to remain spiritual babies. And we want to be coddled. And we want to drink milk. And we just want to hear about how much God loves us over and over and over and over again. And when tragedy happens or a crisis happens, we can't handle it. We can't handle it. We're overwhelmed by it. We're angry at God. We're upset because we were drinking milk and we weren't taking responsibility. And let me explain something to you people. The more we blame God and the more we're upset with God, the further away we are from the answer. It's never his fault. It's because we don't understand free will. Again, we don't understand free will. The Bible says God tests the heart to give, to give a man according to his own ways. The Lord gives us according to his own ways. I even believe that it's the mysteries of the heart, the decisions of the heart that even provides the options we're given. That's what I believe. So, you know, it, when we're, we're further away from the truth. But when you take responsibility, see how fast power is going to come into your life. I don't know if you guys are hearing what I'm saying. And I want to I want to read I want to read James and I'm, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. So and I want to say this, the person that is willing to obey God. Right. The person is, 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 is that is willing to give up, to give up what is keeping them from obeying God will be granted supernatural ability to understand consequences. So I'm going to repeat that. The person that is willing to give up what is keeping them from obeying God is going to be granted supernatural ability to understand consequences. Oh, no, but everyone understands consequences. That's why you, there are people that sometimes even believe it. You tell the man, you know, there's, there's times that I've evangelized. And there was a guy I was evangelizing that, that, you know, I believe he's involved with the gang life that told me straight up, I worship Santa Muerte. Santa Muerte is the spirit of death, right? It's uh, commonly known in, in Mexico. He was like, I worship Santa Muerte. I was with Alfred. Alfred can tell you. And then he showed me on his phone literally a picture of a manifested demon. He literally showed me 
a manifested demon. I'm like, oh, okay. Like next to his girlfriend, like his girlfriend is there and it's a manifested demon. I'm like, yo, what the heck? And it actually looked, looked like, a, like, like, like a skull. And, and he was like, and I was like, look, um, you have to understand because he was talking that crazy, I had to speak boldly to him. And I was like, you understand that, that, that La Santa Muerte can't save you from hell. Like if you were to die, only Jesus can save you from hell. You understand that, right? And he goes, yeah, I understand that. But it's because of the lifestyle that I live. And it's crazy. Like he just like accepted it. So he was telling me he knew the consequences. But how many here agree with me that if the, the floor could open up and he could see hell, he would repent right there. How many agree? If the floor would open up and he would see hell, he would repent right there. How many agree? So people know consequences, but they don't understand consequences. And this is one of the reasons the Holy Spirit came to the world. He says the Holy Spirit came to the world to convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. And what does that mean? It means he has to make it real to you. And this is what sin does. Sin, it causes it to become less and less and less real. It becomes less real to you, but it doesn't stop being less real just to you. This is, that's the power of deception. What is deception? Sin, the consequences of sin are no longer real to you. Deception. The consequences of sin are no longer real to you. And what sin is, you can't see it for what it is. You don't see it for what it is. That's deception, right? And so what happens is when you are willing to give up what is keeping you from obeying God, I don't know if there's anyone hearing me. I'm, 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 halfway, I'm, I'm more than halfway through. If you're willing to give up what is keeping you from obeying God in your heart, then God, that's when, I want you to understand, not before, not before, that's when God is going to give you the supernatural ability to understand consequences. And this is where you become a wise woman and a wise man, where you have spiritual eyes. This is why the Bible says, the righteous man rightly judges all things, but is rightly judged by no one. Are we called to judge? Hmm. The Bible says the righteous man judges all things. I think we're called to judge. We're just not called to judge each other, but we're called to judge what is bad behavior and what is right. The righteous man, the righteous woman, supernaturally can see the trajectory of the sin. They can see the trajectory of a decision. I don't know if you're here. I'm going to move on. I'm going to move on. This is why Jesus could speak in one moment and also be speaking to the future because there is a trajectory. You can't control sin. We cannot control sin. We can only surrender it. Hello? Anyways, I'm moving on. So, and I want to go to James chapter three. And I'm almost done. This is James chapter, chapter three, verse two and six. And, and, I, and I, like I said, I really believe that the Lord is, is setting us up. The Lord is saying all of this, I believe, because I do believe that the Lord has put this in my heart to speak about this. And I believe the Lord is saying all of this because if we would take responsibility, listen, and, and, and one of the scriptures I quoted last week was in Corinthians where, 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 where Apostle Paul was saying, um, you say you are of, of, of Apollos and you say, some say I am of Apollo, some say I am of, of Cephas. And he goes, they are nothing. They are nothing. Right. And this is what happens when we overexalt a woman or a man. And I'm just repeating Bible. It says they are nothing. And it says one plants, one waters. God gives the increase. So so the sower is nothing and he who waters is nothing. And it actually says, and they will all receive their reward together. So obviously there is a reward. But then it says, but wherever there's envy and backbiting. And are you not carnal? Are you not immature? You are behaving like average men. Why average men? Like you come to this earth, you, you get a job, you, 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 you have a family, you feed them, you work, you die. The end, average man lives for pleasure, probably cheats here and there, does this here and there, and then you die. The end, average man. But God has not called you to be an average woman or an average man. He's called you. Whew. He's called you. He's called your life to be a shout from the rooftops to anybody that wants God 
and a cold, hard slap in the face to anyone that wants to deny him. God has called you to be an extension of himself. God has called your life to be a light in the darkness for those that want to come out of it. He's called you to be salt of the earth, to preserve, to preserve it while it's in the middle of its darkness. God has called you to have a ripple effect into generations. <laughs> God has called you to, 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 <laughs> to have, let me tell you something. God has called you to have way more of an effect than you know. You know how I know? Because if, if, if we understood the effect that our lives are called to make, if we understood the effect that our lives are called to make, listen to me, we would never get discouraged. If we understood the effect that our lives were called to make, we would never get discouraged because discouragement says it's not worth it. I've done this and this and that, and nothing has happened. Discouragement says nothing is going to happen. Nothing is going to change. And, and if we understood the impact, this is why do you think hell and heaven are fighting over you? <laughs> All right, I'm going to move on. Uh, 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 my brethren, I, I'm not going to break down the first verse that much, but we'll go back to it. My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. Uh, there are a lot of teachers that they don't, they don't want to hear that, and, and they just don't want to be corrected. For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man or complete man or complete woman, able also to bridle the whole body. Indeed, and then it, it, it breaks, it, it goes on to say like how the tongue is hard to control. So here it says, for if we, are, we stumble in many things, if anyone does not stumble in word, in other words, when you don't stumble in word, when you don't say things you shouldn't say, it's, it's because you have revelation of the consequences of the things you say. How many here, like me, I've had moments where I spend, I'm, I'm having an encounter with God, and in that encounter, God starts showing me, you said this, you said that, and this is the effect that that had. And I'm like, oh my God, Lord, forgive me, Lord. How many have experienced that? right? Without the Holy, first of all, none of us can be truly humble without the Holy Spirit. None of us can be truly humble without the Holy Spirit. Not happening, not happening, right? And so what happens is the Lord shows us the consequences. So it's saying here, someone that's able to keep their tongue is someone that goes after God enough. It's someone that meditates on the word of God day and night. It's someone that prays without ceasing. It's someone that is constantly rejoicing because it's someone that does not become blind about the consequences of the things that they say. And also someone that has the revelation of self-control. It's also someone that understands, that understands, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about the world, about the spirit of the world. If you don't have revelation, if you don't have revelation, about why you should not be committing certain sins, you're going to regret you didn't commit it. If you don't have revelation about why you shouldn't have committed certain sins, you're going to regret you didn't if you didn't. Because, but if you have revelation, you understand that that's power. You understand that, that God has just used your life. You understand the, the beauty, the beauty in what you did. You understand that, that this lifestyle that other people might mock, this is, this, is, this, is why, this is why the Bible says the meek are the ones that are going to inherit the earth. And I'm not going to go crazy about that. But let me tell you, the 1%, what they're fighting over now, right? Some of them are buying uh, millions and millions of acres of farmland, hello, and, 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 and trying to control the food and trying, you know what they, they want? They want control over the earth. Isn't that funny? But the Lord made it clear. I know you want control over the earth, but I'm going to give it to the meek. And he allows them to think that this is a fantasy. And that's, this is why it's such a pleasure. It's such a privilege to be clued in to the revelation of the Lord. And I'm almost done. I'm getting there, guys. I'm getting there. It's also saying, again, I'm not going to get deep into it, that we should not be teachers if we don't know how to keep our tongue and our body. It's also saying that you shouldn't be a teacher. If you don't know how to keep your tongue and your body. But what happens is we got a whole lot of church culture and not enough Bible culture. And that's just the truth. We don't have Bible culture. We have church culture. You know what I mean? And so we prefer, you know, the, 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 the pamphlet of the position and the promotion from a paper that people can get at Kinko's 
and just feel awesome for people to take pictures and applaud. And it's like, listen, the Bible's clear. If you don't have your household in order, you shouldn't be a deacon. But that's another thing. I'm not going to go crazy into that because how could you teach something that you don't fully understand? If you don't fully understand authority, how could you teach it? For we stumble in many things, but the, but the man that is able to keep his, his, his body. So this is, this is what God is saying. Like, in other words, and, and let me just add to this. You're not going to keep your body without revelation, meaning, meaning with staining from the things that everybody else, you know, in the flesh is doing. You're not going to keep your mouth without revelation. And you might do it by force religiously. And this is why a lot of people, I said this last week, are falling away from the church. This is why there's so many worship leaders falling away from the church because they're doing things because somebody told them that it's bad, but not because of a personal conviction. And when the Bible says in the last days, there will be many, it says that, that they will have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. What's the power thereof? What Jesus told Peter was going to happen. Peter said, Jesus, don't go. And he said, it's a, it's a benefit to you that I go because then you will have the Holy Spirit, which is who? He is the power thereof, which means what? It, the power that raised Christ from the dead. And also the conviction of, of righteousness, of judgment, and of sin. That is the power. In other words, you talk about godliness, but, but, but you don't have an understanding, a supernatural understanding of consequences, a supernatural understanding of why God wants what he wants, of why his will is his, uh, uh, is his will and why it's important, a supernatural understanding of, of, of judgment, of things that are going to happen, that no matter what, it's going to happen. You need to listen, listen, if you're going to leave with anything, your understanding in Christ has to be supernatural. It has to be supernatural. And I'll end with this, and I'll just say this quickly, and then we'll pray. Um, this is uh, Galatians 4.2. You guys have heard this in Galatians 4.2, where it says that, that a, a, a son, an heir, even though he is ruler of all, right, he is still like a slave that has to be under tutors or stewards until the, the, the appointed time of the father. And so it says, uh, he is under guardians and managers until the date set by the father, right? And so the father is father God, right? And so if there is a spiritual father or someone that is like a spiritual father, then, then yes, they have to appoint a time, but that time is supposed to be aligned to what the heavenly father wants, right? The spiritual father is supposed to submit to the heavenly father. It can't be God is saying one thing, the spiritual father says no, right? So when it's time for the father right? The father, it says here, there is an appointed time. Why is there an appointed time? There is an appointed time because God wants you to succeed. He wants you, remember the Bible says in the book of Acts, it says, stay in Jerusalem until you are endued with power. It says, stay in Jerusalem until you are endued with power. So there is a moment where, where God knows that your character is, is more powerful than the anointing. And so the anointing won't crush you. Because when we're, when we're not surrendering our weakness, the power on us is going to expose the weakness in us. But when we're surrendering the weakness, the power is going to come from the inside out. Like the Bible says, if you believe my word, living water shall flow from your belly. Living water shall flow from your belly. So I just want to say this. God has an appointed time for you, right? Galatians 4, 2. God has an appointed time for your wife, your husband, for, for your calling, God has an appointed time and he's able to take what has been destroyed, which is the metaphor in the Bible is ashes. He's able to give you beauty for ashes. He's able to turn it around. But the decision, when we, when we want to be mature, there's a line that we have to cross. And what is that line? Am I going to wait to feel it? Am I going to wait to be motivated? Am I going to wait to be inspired? Am I going to wait for it to make sense? Am I, and I'm, am I going to wait for a community to agree with me and applaud it? Am I going to wait or am I going to step? Let me tell you something, something. Sometimes people will misunderstand and think you obeying God is rebellion when actually it's their blessing. Because David's brothers were like, what are you doing? Who's tending the sheep? In other words, you're being disobedient. Like who's tending the sheep, dude? Like, I understand that you want to be out here with the big boys, my dude, but who's tending the sheep? But little did he know did they know that they would have been killed by the Philistines? So sometimes, sometimes your obedience, Joseph, right, being away from his family 
was eventually, even though they're the ones that threw him, but eventually it provided for his family. So sometimes you going ahead of others, right? Sometimes they don't understand that, that maybe it's actually their blessing. Are you hearing what I'm saying or no? Sometimes it's their blessing. So the point is not to try to be smarter than others. The point is to obey God. That's the point. The point is to know what his will is. But he's saying it's, it's, it's your responsibility to build yourself up in him. It's your responsibility to get in his word. It's your responsibility to get fresh revelation. It's your responsibility to know if the people around you are his will. It's your responsibility to get in his presence. It's your responsibility. But then God is like, but when I see that you're willing to take responsibility, you're going to mount up on wings like eagles. You're going to run and you're not going to get tired this time. You're going to walk and you're not going to grow faint. I'm going to give you the power. I'm going to give you the grace and the grace is going to make you unique. And the grace is going to, uh, going to, going to guarantee success. But the Lord is saying, I have an appointed time because I know what the plan of the devil is. And don't, don't give birth to an Ishmael. Don't come into agreement with worldly servants. Don't come into agreement with worldly servants. And do things in your own method and give birth to an Ishmael. Let me prune you. Every tree that, that bears good fruit, the Lord prunes. Let me prune you. Even though it hurts, I'm setting you up to last so that, and it isn't just about you. Don't think it's just about you. I'm setting you up to last because the, the, the mouth of the righteous is a tree of life so that others that are weak can come to you and eat from your mouth because you are planted by, and your roots, they touch the river. And because your roots touch the river and, and the river runs through you so people can come that are weak and eat from your mouth. So it isn't just about you, but the Lord is saying, I am, I have an appointed time because I know your weakness. I know your weakness. I know where you need to be pruned. I know how the enemy plans to take you down. I know what the enemy has waiting and I want to make sure to prepare you. So, 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 so the weapon formed against you will not succeed. It won't prosper. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the weapon, it'll, it'll be used against the enemy. But if you go ahead of me, So I just want to end by saying, God has an appointed time for you. God has not forgotten you. God has not dropped you. God has not forgotten you. And, and so remember, we started with that. We started with that. Second Peter, second Peter, God is not slack. God is not slack concerning his promises. He has not forgotten you. He is not slack. Meaning what? Get back with the truth. Get back to the truth. The word of God never returns void. God is going to do it. Stop trying to be natural. Listen, I know that some people, your faith got hurt. And because, you're, because your faith got hurt, you started focusing on natural methods again because it just felt good. It was just easier. You started focusing on natural methods again because it was easier. It just felt good. It just, it just, but God is saying, listen, come back, come back, step out of the boat again, step out of the boat again. And this time you're going to see, you're going to see me do something different. You're going to see me do a new thing. I just feel like the Lord is saying, listen, get back up again, be encouraged, believe, believe God at his word. He's not a man that he's going to tell you something and not do it. God doesn't say things out of experience, out of, out of inspiration. Listen to this guys. God does not say things out of inspiration. God said, says things from eternity. He doesn't say things from inspiration. He says things from, from eternal perspective. That's where he speaks from. He doesn't, he inspires you. He inspires me. He doesn't need to be inspired. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. He is a consuming fire. So I just want to pray. And um, there's more to this, you know, maybe another season, another time we can get more into the word about spiritual immaturity and, and spirit, what is spiritual immaturity? What is spiritual maturity? Um, but yes, I mean, one of the things you, how do you accelerate spiritual maturity? The key, David had that key. God, show me any unclean way with me. It's praying, God, show me what you need me to change. Show me the attitude that I think is good that isn't. Show me what's in my heart that I think is good that isn't. Show me what you need me to change. And maybe in some cases, it's just laziness or lack of discipline. Whatever it is, show me what, it, what I need to change. And that's one of the keys to maturing because when we're immature, one of the reasons is because we don't see, you, we don't see areas that we're supposed to take responsibility, right? We don't, we don't understand. As soon as you understand it, you start maturing. 